How do you see the Asian tournament influencing the lands, basketball landscape in this region, especially in Taiwan, Macau, Hong Kong, and Philippines? Yeah, no. So we're we're hoping for obviously just changing as much as possible in terms of uh, the basketball culture in some of the Asian countries because the way we play in the TAT is very it's a little bit it's quite different from what you, everybody's used to seeing in Hong Kong because I lived in Hong Kong for ten years, mm-hmm. lived in Taiwan for five years, grew up in Canada, so I see there's a huge gap in the way basketball is played. So I, I, I'm hoping we, I can bridge the American style or North American style basketball into Asian mm-hmm. uh, culture kind of thing, as well as, uh, well, I, to, at the end of the day, we're not looking to quote, quote, take over Macau, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Philippines. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to provide another platform for teams in Taiwan, teams in Philippines to have a chance to compete against each other in this tournament style basketball league so it's different because in a league right let's say you're playing that league game on the the 10th game it's it, the only difference to your team is a win or a loss in the in the uh, in the uh, in the call up right but in our tournament the 10th game could be the finals of the second leg right and there's stakes that's that's on the line right so if you guys watch uh the second leg the finale is so intense. There's packed gym. Uh, everybody is into it. Uh, even the mayors in the Philippines joined the, the game. They're very in, in, into the game. You guys can watch your YouTube video. Uh, the Mustang versus the Polas game. Mm. Uh, but in the record book, that's just a regular season game. Because it's, it's just a league game. But in that particular stop, that's the final game to win the champion of the second leg. So that adds more interest in, I think, personally, to our product. So it makes it more interesting. So down the road, we're going to add more different creative ideas, things we're going to try to take out of the box, out of the original framework of basketball. Maybe we'll even add a 4.9 or something like that, maybe later down the road. But uh, yeah, we're going to be creative and try to make it as fun as possible for our fans and for everybody involved. Okay. So... As a new league just started out and with all these inter countries, you have to fly here, fly there. So how do you yeah. overcome this, uh, this kind of like obstacles and, and difficulties? Oh man, damn. I actually just finished a call with all, all my guys on my team. So we were very, we honestly were a startup. We just started like, like I said, a year or two years ago. Everybody is doing four or five different roles, right? There's no marketing head with five staff, no operation team with 20 staff. We don't have that. We're just trying our best to accommodate as much as possible. Uh, And what, like you said, working with different countries, to be honest, is a very, very big obstacle. Uh, Like, even though we're all Asian teams, every country has their own tendency, right? That's very normal, right? Some teams want to do A, some teams want to do B. And so we're trying to try our best to work out a system, especially in our first year running as a professional league, to make it accommodate as possible at the same time, be a very good product for our fans. So that that's a huge hurdle we're facing right now. I'm hoping down the road, once we get more sponsorship, or once we, we, we be able to generate more revenue, then uh, we'll be able to do things in a more legitimate way in a sense where we can hire more staff get more marketing uh money and all that type of stuff but yeah that's actually to be honest jordan that's huge problem i'm facing right now and uh we're just putting as much time and effort in as as possible but yeah we try our best that's all i can say 